I don't know if it's a moth or a butterfly, but I always feel like butterflies fly across my head. Yeah? Um, when God is showing me something. I don't know. So pretty much you and I are Danny and Alejandra and mom is like further down in the beginning. Like okay. as she's coming towards, right? Say mom is this one. Let's, yeah, let's, let's just say she's there. I don't think she's there in okay. the script, but just for right now, 60s. Okay. So, she's like, oh yeah, you mean I was kicking the ball? Yep, kicking the ball. Daddy. Daddy, yep. Hands up. Right. I would say Danny means, but then when they talk about the client, it's like the... Yes, I feel like they have to be low, right? Yeah. And then they're like talking in like secrets. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then all this like, no more cheese fans. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. You can take a picture, it's cool. We won't charge you. Yo, what is up, World Many Beefs here? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's really good to see you guys. This week, as you can see, we are here location scouting with my senior thesis team. And uh, we're in Camarillo, California at McGrath Farms, which is a potential spot where we could be filming for our senior thesis. For those of you who are unaware, I am in my last year at USC in the master program and we're filming our thesis film, which takes place entirely, well, about 90% at a strawberry field. So I'm here with my lovely director, Chelsea, who you see here, and a few other friends who are all a part of the crew going into this shoot as well. So again, we are just getting a feel for this location. This is typically what happens on a location scout. You go and you just take a look at the place where you're potentially going to be filming. You film some footage and you really just wanna get a look at how it's going to look and feel in the camera. So we're just testing out a few scenes as you can see here and we're just having a really awesome time exploring this location and trying to see if it fits our stories. All right, so that about wraps up the location scout in Camarillo at our first look at a first potential location. So I'm really excited to continue to explore other locations that we have in mind. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions at all about the entire location scouting process or any questions at all about my senior thesis, let me know in the comments down below. 24, 28, 35. 28, just for reference, 24, and a 20. And again, back to 35. That's maybe a little too much right here. But what I have next for you is some behind the scene footage that my friend Alex actually filmed and he's narrating this entire process on how our three-day shoot went. So stay tuned for that because it's coming up very soon. And I hope you guys enjoy this week's vlog. Again, if you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments, reach out to me. I would love to answer any of your questions if you have any. So if you enjoyed this week's vlog, you know what to do. Go ahead and do a super jump on that like button. And uh, after these few clips narrated by my best friend, Alex, you can find him on TikTok. The handle is going to be on the frame. So yeah. Stay tuned for that. So I will see you all in seven days. Fight on. I recently shot a short film and this is day one of production. A quick look at all the crew members, including myself and my wife, the director. We brought all the gear that we could fit inside the small apartment. And here you can see a grip member setting up a silk. The camera that we used was the Canon C70 along with Canon Cinema Prime lenses. We rented out three different lenses, the 24, 35 and 85 Prime lenses. And here is the first scene of the day that we were shooting. I'm obviously behind the camera. I'm the DP of this short film. And here's my friend Matt, who is the first assistant camera who is pulling focus. Here's another behind the scenes shot of our whole setup for this first scene. And then we quickly moved into the second scene of the day. My wife is the director for the short film. And here is the behind the scenes look at her director's monitor that we set up. We also brought our motorized slider on set to use for some sliding shots to make it a little bit more cinematic and get more movement in our shots. We also shot a night scene and this was the last scene of the day. 
You can see my wife rehearsing the lines with the actors. Or you can see Matt, the first AC, getting the slate ready for the next shot. And that's it for day one. I recently shot a short film and here's day two of filming. Day one is in the playlist down below. Here's me and my first AC slash gaffer discussing the lighting setup that we wanted. And here is a grip Roman who is setting up full CTO gel to make the light a lot warmer than it already was. Even though the Falcon Eyes light was already pretty warm, here's the end result of what it looked like as Mama and the lead actress was discussing and rehearsing lines. Here's me switching out the light bulb in a practical. And then off to the corner of the room is this Aperture Nova P300C. And that is set up at 10,000 Kelvin to emulate moonlight. And here is the director monitor setup and all of my wife's notes as she's taking notes and looking at the talent's performance and making sure everything looks good to her eyes. And then here I am setting up for a handheld shot, blocking out the movement with our actress and making sure the lights are all dialed in. And here's Mau Mau looking at the shot, making sure that the performance was good for this really intense shot. And then here's Matt looking mad for no reason at all. In the film, our actress is FaceTiming someone on the phone, so this is the POV shot of her looking at the phone. And here's me setting up a small little LED light to emulate a phone shining on the actress's face so it looks realistic. After that, we moved into the living room where our actress gets quote-unquote knocked out in 3, 2, 1, BAM! And here is Matt doing a wet down of the floor to make it look a lot shinier and creating more reflections and little bokeh in the shot. And for this outside scene, we only used a reflector to bounce some more light back into our actress so that we didn't have to rig up any heavy-duty lights outside. And here's me getting some b-roll footage. Now we had a couple more scenes at the end of the night to shoot, but we don't have any BTS, so here's a little sneaky peek, a little sneak peek of the footage. And this is just a quick color grade of what I kind of want the final image to look like. You can definitely see the cooler moonlight outside playing on the couch and then our warmer interior lights, some practicals inside the house, inside the apartment. But that is it for day two. Stick around for day three. I recently shot a short film and this is day three of production. Today's shoot day was a lot easier than the previous two days. This was a very short day. We were shooting at a coffee shop where the owner was super, super awesome and let us uh, use their store, the entire store, after hours. As you can see here, this is our whole setup. It's very simple. One light outside the store and then one inside the store as well. Here is Matt, my first AC, cleaning out the lens, making sure there's no dust, smudges, or any fingerprints on the lens itself so that we don't get any imperfections. You can see that bright light in the background is not actual sunlight. It is fake light uh, shot with a Aperture 600D right outside there. And the little lens thing that you see my wife Meow Meow using is called a director's viewfinder. She's the director and using that little viewfinder can change the perspective of different lens sizes so that she understands what a certain shot will look like. Let's say, for example, I want to shoot on a 35 millimeter. She can change it to a 35 millimeter focal length and she can see exactly what that looks like. One little tip about moving the tripod up or down, you want to have two people at all times on the tripod, one to hold the camera and the other one to unlock and lock the legs down. Here's a little setup of the director's monitor where Meow Meow can see a very clear picture. And as you can see, she's right there looking at the shot, making sure everything looks good to her eyes. And here is what I'm actually shooting. As you can see in all these shots, I'm shooting into the sunlight, which is very bright. So I'm ending down all the way and I'm supplementing in back all that light by using really strong, powerful lights like the Aperture 600D. And you can see one of the Aperture 600Ds right there. And it's pointing up into the white ceiling and shooting it at an angle where some of it is bouncing back into the actor's and actress's face. Here's a little close up of Matt's focus pulling system. Here's another angle of that Aperture 600D shooting into the corner of the room and then bouncing all that light back into the actor's faces. After that coffee shop scene, we move to a park nearby, which is outside, perfectly right around golden hour. And here's me tracking them as they're walking towards the camera. What Mama is doing here is really important, guiding me and making sure that I'm not tripping over anything and potentially falling back and destroying a ton of gear. Here's a close-up look of the whole camera setup as we were setting up to do a short hiking sequence. And here is some B-roll romantic cutesy shots that we got. 
Here's our boom operator and sound mixer, Dina, who was getting some on location sound effects so that we can use it in post. And that is it for day three. This was the last shot of the day. We had a lot of fun on set and I really can't wait to do it again.